Hello powerful people! Welcome and thank you for visiting my channel where I share everything you need to know to design your life. In today's video I would like to share with you seven design beliefs that you must change before designing your home. Our beliefs can hold us back and I want to empower you to design your life. To be clear, today we will be focusing on designing or redesigning the furnishings of your home we are not talking about remodels or restorations that would require a professional to do the work that's outside your skill set. There will always be links below a video for any items that I share with you, including my filming equipment in case you are curious or considering some of the items for yourself. First design belief that you must change is if it is not trending, popular, or a fad, it is not good interior design. First, Let's define what trend, fad, and popular really mean. Trend is the general direction something is developing or changing. Fad is the intense or widely shared enthusiasm for something, especially something short-lived, even though there's no basis in the quality of the item itself. Popular is when the intended product is suited to or intended for the taste, understanding, and means of the general public rather than the specialist or intellects, or just think rather than for the individual. One other thing I think we ought to understand going forward, just so it puts everything into context, is conditioned. And I think, I think we're all familiar with that term. Conditioned is when something has significant influence over us. Here I will be using condition in relationship to design, but it can also have relevance to generations or to politics. Think of conditioning as simply being exposed to something so consistently that you either just accept it or you're strongly influenced by it, as in trends, fads, and popular. Exposure occurs in ads, social media, TV, maybe someone we're influenced by or we admire. TV shows, th there's all, source, all types of sources for the influence, but condition itself is just where you see it over and over and over. And that's how it becomes widespread. If we look at this as a whole, what we learn is that if we allow ourselves to be swept along these waves of influence that we are actually creating the spaces around us for the masses and moving further and further away from ourselves as an individual and our own developing our own personal style. It isn't possible to have something be our own signature style and be a, the style of the masses at the same time. These do not coexist. So that means only the original style with the original creator is it a, an original design? For everyone else that copies that design, it just becomes one more person in the masses. So if we kind of reverse that, then you can understand how following trends, fads, and whatever is popular is not following your own personal style. It's not developing your own personal style. Which leads us to belief number two that must change. If my design style doesn't look like everyone else's design style, I must be doing it wrong. No, stop, don't think that. Different is good. When your farmhouse style looks like your friend's farmhouse style, which looks like a thousand other people's farmhouse style, it becomes mass design. Trends, fads, popularity driven by marketing which we've already touched on. Personal design is not like everyone else's. Personal design and custom design is where you take what inspires you, what resonates with you, and you create your own design concept and you, you create it in a unique way for you. If you're taking the basic concept of a design, then maybe the colors and the shapes that inspire it, and then you are putting your own spin on it and making it custom to you, then you're doing it the right way. Using farmhouse design as our example, and I'm not picking on farmhouse, it just seems to be one that's quite common, but let's say farmhouse design is your thing, but you think that shiplap everywhere is just way, way too much. 
Uh, let's say that you, instead you decide you want it just on a kitchen island or maybe you just want it on a, fa a fireplace facing. But if that's too much, maybe then you decide instead that you will put it inside a built-in of the mudroom just as an accent. Maybe you don't want signs everywhere. Maybe you simply want, say, name labels above each of the hooks in this mudroom wall that has the shiplap. So you begin to take the influences of that design and then you begin to interpret them in a way that works for you. It really comes down to doing as much or as little of these influences as you want to do without feeling guilt and without feeling like you are wrong in the design you are creating. Because if someone else has shiplap throughout their entire space and you don't like that and then you are maybe having a negative thought about that, well, I should like that, or I should want to do that. Well, I'm not doing that, so therefore it's not really designed. That's where it gets out of hand, because design is meant to serve you. You're not supposed to be serving it. You're not supposed to be bound by certain things in order for you to have a well-designed home. It is all about personalizing it and customizing it for you. And let's say that uh, one thing I've seen quite a bit of are like plaid table runners. And let's say you're looking for one and you cannot find one in the color scheme that you want. That just, what's out there just isn't quite resonating with you. Rather than being bound by, oh, well, this is what has been produced. This is what's being offered. So therefore, this must be designed and I have to accept one of those. Go find the plaid fabric you like in the color you want regardless of what that color is, if it works with your design, go get that plaid fabric, make your own table runner, and be proud of it. Don't feel less design. Don't feel like you've done something wrong just because you decide you want your plaid runner to be orange instead of blue or gray or taupe or grayish. You just do what works for you and your design and it makes you happy. In case you are new to my channel, my name is Clary Smith and I am an interior designer and EXP realtor and my passion is empowering you to design your life. I share design and real estate content giving you the inside knowledge to create great spaces to live the life you want to experience. Whether you are setting up a temporary home, selling and moving on, or in your forever home, it is all relevant and packed full of design content. The third design belief that you must change is to design my home, everything has to be replaced and new. I have to start from scratch. Not necessarily, unless you're going in a completely different design direction. Typically, the furnishings that we have can't, some of them at least, can be repurposed into our new design. The trick is to look at things in a different way rather than seeing that floral chair that you just really don't like the fabric, look at the shape. Does that shape still say Art Deco? Does it still say traditional? Does it still, whatever your design style is, does the basic shape of any piece of furnishing in your home, be it furniture or lamp or knickknack, does the outline of it, does the, does the shape of it still fit the design direction that you're going in? Because if the chair still has the shape you need, Maybe it just needs recovering. If the table still has the shape you want, maybe it needs refinishing or painting or a new top. So it does not necessarily require that you start from scratch with nothing and have to go in and, and buy all new. Now, some people have the budget to do that or they choose to do that and that's perfectly fine, but it is not a requirement to achieve a really nice custom design. The number four design belief that you must change is that it will cost a lot of money to design the interior of my home. Maybe, maybe not. It does depend on the individual and the budget that you're working with. As we mentioned before, uh, sometimes people go in and they just from start to finish, they just do everything at one time. Another way to achieve this, which is more of an organic design, and they're some of the most beautiful, is to do it over time. It's where you add to the pieces you already have, that you, the pieces you've selected to keep, and you add to those over time, and maybe swap them out or upgrade them as you go, and then you end up with a design in the end that you really love. But this is the main reason it's not a good idea 
to follow the trends and fads and what's popular because if you're building a design over time then by the time you're finished it's gone the trends fads and popular has gone through several renditions and what you've done so far would be irrelevant if that were your main focus so that's why it's very important just to get it in your mind i want a personal custom design and then you can pull those elements inspiration from what you see it doesn't mean you can't partake in these things that are occurring around you but it means you don't let that become your dominant guidance you simply take what influences you and you tweak it to suit your design rather than what's in the marketplace or what's being marketed as being in style let's say the design style you're going for you would like to have a rattan rocker well you can find rattan rockers that are a little over three hundred dollars sometimes you can find them less depending on if you're buying new or if you're buying used but let's say you find your budget needs one that's around 300 well there's plenty of options for that now the the style of it might be slightly different than some of the more expensive ones or the materials are going to be different than the more expensive ones but at the end of the day it's still a rattan rocker and it's still very beautiful if your budget allows it you might go for something like the nanny rocker the nanny rocker uh, was released in 2013 and it runs a little over $1,300. Now it is rather popular, so sometimes it's out of stock and you have to wait for it to come back in stock. So there's plenty of people buying it. But if your budget is not there, then don't feel bad because you need to buy a $300 rocker instead. Because like I said, there are very beautiful rockers at various price points and you just need to focus in on what style you're looking for and then find something that falls within your budget range. Design myth number five that you must change. I have to design my space in a specific design style in order for it to be done right. This is so not true. Design styles are descriptive categories that communicate a lot of information in a few words. Originally, design styles were labeled to represent the, per, the designer who designed the style originally and or a decade, say, mid-century modern. Now, we have many, many, many design styles today because people will take a design or they'll mash two together and then they call it something totally different, such as urban farmhouse, modern farmhouse, ru uh, rustic farmhouse, so you end up with all these different labels that basically just means someone took multiple design styles, combined them together, and now, as again, humans are prone to doing, they give it a label. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it wrong. It does not make it prescriptive to where you have to do the exact same thing. If anything, it should give you the confidence to know that you also have the right to combine or to change design styles as is suitable for you and it not be considered incorrect or wrong. The important factors in designing a space are the design elements and not the design label. I could take a detailed description of a design style and follow it and in the end end up with something that is not good design that is completely wrong for the space and wrong for me but I can take the design elements and learn them and apply them to any space and I will end up with a functional, well-designed space, even if it doesn't fall under a specific category of style. Learn the elements of design and then find the furnishings and accessories that you gravitate toward, that you find pleasing, and apply those design elements to designing your space and you will always end up with a good design and an aesthetically pleasing design. And in case I did not mention it, the design elements are balance, rhythm, and harmony, emphasis, scale, and repetition. Design belief number six that you must change. I have to be able to define my design style for it to be right. In other words, if I am not copying someone else's design, I have to define what I'm doing. Not true. 
Design is metamorphic and it responds over time to the space and to the user. Even if your space were professionally designed, you will see that it changes over time. You will create and recreate your space over time as you learn more about yourself and your family and how you all interact within that space. When you design a space based strictly on trends, fads, and maybe design styles, you are basically designing by numbers. This is not custom design. This is not designing for yourself personally and what works for you and what you find appealing. When you analyze your space, design it around the needs of your family and the furnishings that you like. This is what creates custom design. Design belief number seven that you must change. I don't have the knowledge, I, or any creativity to design my own space. Yes, there is a lot of skill involved in designing a space and designers have to know this because they are designing for a variety of different people and different spaces. But you have the advantage of your own space. You live in that space. You know what works, you know what doesn't work. What you don't have is the design knowledge and that is attainable. We are surrounded by information. If anything, we are on information overload. Anything you want to know, Google it, go to YouTube, read up on it, go to lectures, webinars. There, there is no end to the sources, ways to gain some design knowledge that is available to everyone other than Google and YouTube and books. It's also Skillshare because depending on what you're wanting to do, you can go to Skillshare and for a monthly fee, you can watch all of the uh, classes, courses that you want to on that particular subject and you can you can search that and find exactly what you're looking for. So it is a great source. Skillshare, Google, YouTube, and books are great. Be patient, do the research, and create a plan. And if you follow this, you can create a functional and aesthetically pleasing space and you can do it one project at a time. So in the end, will your home be any less designed? Will it be any less beautiful? Yes, no, maybe. That is completely up to you and how much time and effort that you put into the project. It depends on how patient you are and how willing you are to learn what you need to do. If you're lazy about the entire process and you don't learn what you need to do in order to create that design you're looking for, you could end up with a hot mess. If you analyze your space, your needs, what you want the space to look like, you do the research, you're willing to make the plan, you're willing to be patient and carry it through to the end being firmly flexible, it can be done. What is firmly flexible, you ask? Firmly flexible is being firm in your vision and decisions while being flexible enough to pivot when necessary. You will have the confidence if you've done the work it takes to learn what you need to know. Will your final design look like a designer created it? Probably not. This is not meant to be discouraging. It's because a designer would be bringing in their own influences, their own design knowledge, things that they have seen. Maybe they would introduce materials or uh, furnishings that you weren't aware existed. So they will be two completely different spaces, but that does not mean that it would work less for you. It does not mean that it would be less functional or less aesthetically pleasing. It would just be different. If you enjoyed this video, it would mean so much to me if you would subscribe and become part of our new community of powerful people. It will not only promote the channel, but it will also allow me to reach more people and empower them to design their life. This video was not created to convince you that fads and trends and what's popular is bad. It was to make you aware so that you can appreciate them, be inspired by them, but not be ruled by them. These, of course, are my opinions on interior design and all interior designers have their own opinions. It doesn't make them right and me wrong or vice versa. They're simply design opinions. Tell me what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What are your guiding beliefs around interior design? 
Leave it in the comments below and let's get a conversation started. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you will also consider watching the rest of the playlist, which only has seven videos, and they are packed full of valuable content to empower you to design your life. And let's say that one thing I've seen quite a bit of are like plaid table runners. And let's say you're looking for one and you cannot find one in the color scheme that you want. That just, what's out there just isn't quite resonating with you. Rather than being bound by, oh, well, this is what has been produced. This is what's being offered. So therefore, this must be designed and I have to accept one of those. Go find the plaid fabric you like in the color you want, regardless of what that color is. If it works with your design, go get that plaid fabric, make your own table runner, and be proud of it. Don't feel less design. Don't feel like you've done something wrong just because you decide you want your plaid runner to be orange instead of blue or gray or taupe or grayish. You know, do, do you. God, I hate that term. <laughs> You just do what works for you and your design and that makes you happy.